Hey guys, Rob Stellini here, and um, it's A to Z. I'm going to stop claiming it's every Thursday because um, I've been so disgustingly busy um, that just uh, I don't have time to breathe, sleep, let alone uh, think about other stuff like this. But um, I'm, I'm getting this done. Uh, this is coming to you on Thursday, the 11th of April. Uh, and I'm looking at unorthodox comment of web design and workflow. So you guys. 21 comments on this. Um, web design is perfect for me. Most of you will know I'm a sort of web like web developer, front end developer, web designer, whatever you want to brand me. Um, I call myself a front end developer, web designer, and type lover. Um, so we'll kick off with web design. Web design is, I love it. I think I mean it's it's a natural extension from what what a lot of you guys will be doing, designing backgrounds and stuff. The next step is definitely websites um, because YouTube channels, especially the old ones, were essentially the flat design of a website. Now, when I say flat, I mean the style-wise. I mean sort of layered uh, Photoshop files. Now, most of you know that Photoshop files don't make websites, uh, but you, this is it's a place to start. Um, and a lot of people think that a prerequisite for being a web designer is knowing how to code. It isn't. Um, I'm a big advocate for knowing how to code, and I think people, everyone that does web design, or everyone that is a web designer, should know how to code, at least very basically, purely for the fact that if you're designing a website, you should know what the web can and can't do, or just how far you're able to push the boundaries of the web. Um, It's a hugely powerful tool, but you need to make sure that you know the limits. Um, And so... From there, um, you can. Like when I when I started web design, um, it's a very very long time ago now. Uh, I just I started by uh, twe- uh, tweaking forums, just playing around with uh, PHP and stuff like that, and trying to get um, forum things to work. and And it was it was it was a really nice insight just to sort of like fiddle with little things. And I realised that that's not what most people are able to do because it's not available for everyone uh, I was in a position where I was uh, kind of in the know a little bit and knew how to do that stuff so um, being able to do it was was easy so um, that that first step for me the first step is obviously the most difficult um, and that first step for me was made quite easy by the sort of availability of something to tinker with and no one else that knew how to do it um, and that was when I was about 15 um, Maybe earlier than that, fourteen. So, sort of, I'll drop my pen. Seven years later, uh, where am I now, and what have I done? Um, I've just continued with it. Uh, I eventually worked out that you don't need sort of forums to fiddle with to create a website. You can just sort of start from a blank canvas, and that was the most daunting thing. Actually, was opening my first empty HTML file and starting to build a website. Uh, there are plenty of sort of bare bones. Um, boilerplate things that you can download whether they build the sort of backbone for you uh, and they sort of add everything in around it you, you just sort of tweak it but actually I, I prefer um, sort of starting from the beginning and, and building my own way um, it means that it won't always be right but you kind of know what you're doing you learn from what you're doing um, so yeah that's that, that's kind of the way I started uh, I just started playing you don't need to be able to host or have a domain to to be a web developer uh, you just need to be able to d- develop locally so that means opening notepad saving it as a .html file and then opening that file in Google Chrome or Firefox or please don't use Internet Explorer um, and then just changing stuff in the word file hitting save and refreshing it in the, the browser that's literally how easy it is to be a web designer uh, web developer rather web designer um is probably what you guys are more interested in so um i'll focus more on that now a web designer can be anything from designing widgets or designing entire web pages you don't have to um be designing every web page of a website remember a website doesn't necessarily just be after one page uh well, that's very trendy at the moment um you're you can just as you would a YouTube background in Photoshop, just start and do it. But um, there are things to remember when you're doing that. What are the web standards? What's popular at the moment? What um, what can I look at that's creative and inspirational? Um, my best best shot is Dribble, really. 
Um, if you guys don't know what Dribble is, click the link in the description. Um, Dribble is a invite only um, peer to peer designer network, sort of like Behance, but you just post little screenshots. Um, and it's invite only, which is a bit elitist, but you can join if you're not um, invited. You could just sort of be a member and you can like people's things and follow people. And um, I'm on Dribble. I've, I've posted a few of my own stuff and, and people seem to like it. So it, it's a good place for sort of feedback. And um, as it grows, it will become an even better resource. Um, so, yeah, in, inspiration from what's around you. Look on your favorite websites. What works on your favorite websites? Um, I suggest you move away from YouTube because they keep breaking it, so just ignore it. Um, but what works on your favorite websites? Why does it work? What uh, elements are are there that are making you want to stay on the website, navigate around more easily? Um, and remember, you can push the boundaries a bit. You don't have to have a nav at the top, um, name, I'm this and that, then some images, then some text, and then blah, blah, blah. You can be a bit different. Um but the problem with designing in Photoshop or Fireworks or Illustrator is that, um, sorry, it's my chair creaking, is that you're not coding it. And one of the biggest questions on the lips of web, developer, web developers at the moment is um, responsive web design. So making it so that it fits any type of screen. And if you look at my website, as you scale, scale the browser, it reacts, it's responsive. Um, and it's it's very very popular at the moment there are a lot of people that love it there are some people that don't like it and saying that it increases workflow and um it doesn't actually aid the user and not many people view it on a mobile but my analytics say that enough people do it for me to, me to make it worth it and mobile browsing statistics just increase and increase so if you want to get on a good bandwagon now start responsive uh, but that kind of means not designing in photoshop which sucks uh, if you're starting off um so basically just sort of take baby pigeon steps with web design um learn bits of code as you go work out how it would work on a website maybe start in photoshop and just gradually move out um how i did it i just learned i i, I found a problem and once i worked out what the problem was i just started it i, I cracked on um and not everyone will be able to do that. I imagine the majority of you will, though, because you're here. I imagine you've seen a few tutorials on YouTube about how to make backgrounds, but you've developed your own style and you've developed your own work, way of working. We'll go on to workflow in a minute, but um, just have a go and enjoy it. That's 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 why. I, I know loads of people don't enjoy what they do. I love what I do. I love web development. There's, there are times where I'm a little bit edgy because I can't get something to work or this and that but actually the relief and the, the feeling of success when you get something to, to work and function is brilliant and I, I would I would never take that away from anybody uh, I love what I do and it's amazing that I can get paid for doing this um, so I, I strongly encourage you guys to if you do think you, you do you would enjoy this then get involved get stuck in um, so that's web design I, I could do a whole podcast series on web design and actually something I've thought about once my dissertation and sort of projects are in is doing a, a couple of not specific things um, about how to do stuff but just a, a podcast on web development um, and stuff like that and I've, how long have I been talking for? Eight minutes right so I, I better get on to workflow um, like I say I, I, I might do some more web design podcasts and stuff uh, later on in the future so if you're not subscribed to my channel make sure you are um so you can hear them. <clears throat> oh, I've got a bit of a cough at the moment. So we'll go on to workflow. Um, and I talked about... I can't remember which episode it was. I talked about it. Um, but workflow is really important. Um, your, your best asset is doing stuff quickly. And that's not rushing stuff. That huge, huge difference is doing stuff quickly. So um, you can make physical improvements to your workflow. Like I've got um, a 24-inch monitor plugged into my MacBook Pro. Um, I work predominantly on the 24-inch monitor, and that imp improves my workflow because I've got more space to work with. I don't work at everything at 24 inches and full screen in 1080p. 
actually I have most windows sort of visible visible right now I've got a preview of uh, Tuesday's uh, typeface Tuesday my audio hijack pro um, recording I've got Twitter open I've got my emails open I've got a YouTube video open and I've got Spotify open all on screen and visible um, and that's not cluttered it's they're all there and I can just pump 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 pull each one as I need them and that's a non-design improvement to my workflow um, by having the right tools I'm setting myself up for the the task at hand I don't use the latest Photoshop I'm on CS 5.5 um, that doesn't affect me though because actually I know my way around the programs and I know what I need to do and how to do it so I, I guess over the year I've perfect over the years I've perfected um, and what well, perfected perfect I'm so far from a perfect workflow uh, I've improved my workflow just by creating stuff like I've got my icons in my one channel template the template you guys have probably already downloaded um, they're already in there so that I don't have to start dragging them from other files or working out where they are they're all there and if I don't need them I just delete them out or more often than not, I just leave them um, my websites I've built my own little template that I build from as I begin I, I open it up and I start going into it and then I resave it as my a new file and having these templates is important because it means that you can get some kind of consistency you know where everything is and you don't you don't have to worry about re fixing stuff and learning stuff every time you do a new project. Um, I'm looking at buying a new iMac, and I'm going to make sure it ha I pr it'll probably have a CS6 or CS7, depending on when it comes out, on it. And I'm going to make sure it's set up exactly the same as my Mac uh, MacBook Pro was, because this is the way I work. It's the way I function. A lot of people don't like the way Dreamweaver works. I love it because it's the way I've learned. I'm sampling sublime text too for my web design of web de web de <laughs> for my web development um but you can't beat what you know in and out now that's not to suggest that if you get a new program it doesn't improve your workflow it's bad give it a week give it two weeks and, and see how it works um see how it affects your workflow see how it improves it does it slow you down does it make you think more does it um improving workflow isn't necessarily doing it quicker I said that at the beginning but I've just thought about it improving workflow is about getting to the right solution more quickly so that's not nailing the design the first time that's how to build in opportunities to revisit stuff and to fix things and stuff like that so if you're looking if you're looking to to design a poster let's use poster I don't use post very often, but um, your first execution probably won't be right. It would probably it'd be quite far from what you want it to be. There might be a few aspects, but actually you probably need to strip it down, go back and start again. Um, you might find yourself pulling stuff from your first iteration or your second iteration or your third. Um, and I think that's something that's lost in the YouTube community is um, the number of times you ha can revisit something or redesign something uh, before you submit it or give it to a excuse me, give it to a client, because the truth is, your your work and your time on YouTube is very quick, the concept, you're not paid very much if you're being paid for your YouTube stuff, and if you're not, you're not, you're being paid nothing, so you, the idea is to ma minimise losses by doing it as quickly as you possibly can, um, again, not rushing it, just quickly, but in the real world, you're paid a lot more because you have more time to fix stuff and to revisit stuff and actually the client is never going to like it the first time that's kind of a rule of thumb I've learnt from um, working uh, from developing um, and sort of throughout my university degree is that you're you've always got to try it two or three different ways before you're satisfied before you can be satisfied that you've explored uh, different avenues um, so that, that that's kind of workflow and a bit of sort of exploring different avenues. What comes after V? X A B C E F G H G F Q R S T U V W. And we're on W. W X. Oh God, X. Um, right. Yeah, X, just do what you can for X. If you can think of something for X, then that's great. If not, it's going to have to like extra or exaggerated or something like that. Um, so, work out what you, you want to 
uh, hear me talk about for X, post in the comments, and as always, uh, like each other's comments so you guys can see what I want, uh, what you, uh, so I can see what you want me to talk about. That's such a mouthful, I always mess it up. Um, thanks to Unorthodox Design for web design and workflow. Um, thanks to everyone who suggested stuff. Just looking at the comments, there are some other people that have uh, suggested um, some other um, bits and someone who's used something similar to my branding. So I'm just going to have a look at that in um, the meantime. Uh, but yeah, I've been Rob Cellini. Uh, it's been Thursday. It's been A to Z. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.